we're going to build a 700 R4 out of a 93 Camaro. It's kind of near the crossover here. It's not quite a 4L60. It doesn't have the plug on the other side, but it does have this weird five prong plug. So we're going to start with getting rid of the converter. I give you an idea of the fluid, it was pretty muddy. So we'll start with getting rid of any brackets or external. In this case, we have a shift lever. We've got an electronic speedo back here. Yeah, we're not gonna worry about this mount. We're gonna pull off this governor cover. We'll pull out the side servo. These are pretty tricky to get out. There's actually a blue O-ring in here. So if you get under the O-ring, pull it out with a pick. You can actually cut it. You can usually pull the pull it all the way out, and then the cover comes right off. That's what engages the second gear band. There's a lot of clutch material in the bottom of the pan. It's fair to say that probably the three, four clutches in this one are fried. Valve body bolts are all tens. On the newer years, they stuck three eights, three eight millimeter heads in there. This is the locker converter solenoid. Switching away. But not anymore. That's a one-two accumulator. Okay, so that's more check balls. Go in here. 
here, here. There's a check ball capsule here. I believe there's going to be one down here, down there. So you have to pull the valve body off first, otherwise, try pulling the pump first. When the lockup solenoid goes in here, it actually goes into the pump. So if you try to come out of the front first, you're going to break that. So over here in the case, this is looking really left. We got a couple things we've got. This is the 3-4 accumulator, and there's a piston in the bottom. And then here we have, this is the second gear band anchor. So we're not going to pull that out because there's really no way to grab it. But once we get the pump out, we'll push up on it and it'll come out. There's two holes that are threaded for a slide hammer, but it's almost just as easy to rock with a screwdriver. That's your pump, we'll get into that in a minute. Pump washer. And then you see the second gear band right here. If we pull this down, we can either push up. Okay, now you can see up here, this spruts come up a little bit. So now we should be able to get the band off. Band is off. Once the band's off, we can pull the input drum. It's all like the reverse drum. So you can see the, the band's pretty dark. It's been kind of slipping and it's been pretty warm. The reverse drum looks intact, has quite a bit of clutch pack clearance. Not sure why yet. But the actual reason for failure and the main problems are going to be in here. Okay, there's the problem. It didn't look right. See all these grooves are broken out. There's a snap ring that used to be there. And there was also a clutch pack that used to be in there that was applied off of this. This is a piston extension. So if you look inside the hole there, you can see that the clutches and the stills are still in there. And at the bottom of those is going to be a snap ring that should be attached here on the outside. So this drum is broken. So that's the failure. We'll probably find the rest of it's probably cherry. So let's just dump it and see. Those clutches, they are damaged. They kind of flaked off. Two coast clutches. Now those are smoldered as well. There's nothing left here with the with those on the so. Now this is a sprag. It should turn one way, but not the other. So it turns that way, but it holds that way. See that yellow ring in there? That's kind of tricky to get out. So here's a bitch snap ring. There's a bitch snap ring. Time to carry gear. You check these. You're not checking to see if they go up and down, because they do. You're checking to see if they rock this way. That's a good planet. Bearing looks nice. That's where it rides, that looks good. Here's the clutches and snap ring that should have been in that drum. They've been pretty warm as well. This is the sun shell. These break a lot. See all the pieces of the bottom of that drum. These will break a lot right here. This part's kind of stamped still, it's kind of weak. A lot of times you get in these are the 4L60s. This will snap, and it's usually because somebody was driving the car and was too impatient to come to a full stop before they went from forward to reverse, or vice versa. Pull out the band anchor. Underneath that yellow snap ring, is another sprag in the center is the sun gear for the for the uh, 
sun shell. Okay, now we want to pull the well shaft off. Bell housing. You can see here, this is the gear that the speedometer works off of. And there, that's the one the governor works off of. There's a sprag. Turns that way, but not that way. The lower planetary gear. And the lower ring gear. And then there's the back bearing. What remains in there is the lower reverse piston. There's a spring cage in there you can press, and then there's a clip you pull out. That has a special tool. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Lastly, here's the output shaft. Here's the reverse drum. Let's get a look in there real quick. Those clutches actually survived. Okay, in order to get this piston out of here, you can see there's a snap ring right there. And by pushing down this clamp, press that spring. We grab this. When we release it, we can get the spring cage to create cage, spring cage to come out. And get the piston. Sometimes it'll just come right out. In this case, it did. If not, you can tap your drum upside down, and it'll usually fall out. So these have a one-sided sill, points down into the piston chamber. Same thing with the inner. So make sure you put your sills on, you put them on the same direction you pull them off. Okay, so as I was saying earlier, Sunshell likes to fell on. This, these are a couple things that like to fell on these units and the things you should look for. Um, this is the spline. You see that's a big heavy duty piece of metal. It goes in this cheesy stamped. It goes in like that. So it's kind of usually a little loose anyway. But when you go forward to reverse without stopping, you pretty much put a jackhammer on this area right here. And they'll either snap right off the it's flush, or sometimes it'll just strip the teeth all together. And this applies to 4L80s, or I'm sorry, 4L60s as well. Uh, the other common failure that you'll see, this planetary gear, a lot of times this bearing will fell, and it'll grind down the surface to where it makes contact with the sun shell, and sometimes it'll even It'll even uh, break off. It'll grind so thin on this bottom area to where it'll detach around this outer edge to where this stays on the shaft and from here forward comes right out. When that happens, it can be pretty difficult to get that yellow snap ring out too. Another, another common failure. In this case, it broke the outer snap ring edge. So the three, four clutches that sit on top here there was nothing, the backing plate wasn't able to hold them back, so they were just going into the sun shell. Um, but a lot of times, and this is a 700, so it's, it's, got, a, it's got a kick down cable or a detent cable, and that's what controls the pressure on it. You just adjust that and you're good. But on the 4L60s, the three, four clutches will fail quite a bit. If, if you have a mass airflow problem or a throttle position sensor problem, uh, that kind of helps calculate pressure to apply to the transmission during shifts. So if the pressure's low, it's gonna slip. When it slips, you're causing damage. As far as the 700 goes, if there's damage to the three, four clutches on the outside, that's not this. A lot of times that's because the detent cable isn't adjusted correctly. When you're wide open throttle, it should be adjusted tight like a guitar string. So those are a couple things to look for. That concludes our teardown with the uh, 700 R4 transmission.